Our next speaker is going to touch base. Last year we had an update from Don Demenza, CEO of Western Forest Products and a member of the CHAG group. CHAG standing for Coastal Harvesting Advisory Group. Uh, Darshan Sahota is going to speak today. Darshan is the President of Island Timberlands, Senior Vice President of Brookfield Timberlands Management and the Board of BC Forest Safety Council. Uh, He's a small rancher on Vancouver Island, third generation forest industry worker from UBC, RPF, an MBA at Royal, Royal Road. So let's get our hands together for Darshan Sahota. I'll just, just get myself set up to this ergonomic uh, podium here. Thanks, Doug. And thanks to all of you for coming out today. Uh, it's a big turnout, although I looked at the front here and it looked kind of like somebody hit it with Roundup. Um, but then I realized when I came closer, it's because all the tables say reserved. So, um, you know, it is a big turnout today and it's a testament to how important everybody here places safety in, in their daily work. Um, and I'm really pleased to see behind me all of the uh, sponsorships, not only from the major companies, but also from many of our contractors, uh, some who aren't our contractors. You know, it's, it's one thing for them to come, but it's another thing for them to put more into it, uh, put their own money into this. So uh, thanks again for that. Um, as uh, Doug mentioned, I'm here to give an update on the uh, Coast Harvest Advisory Group. Um, this group has been working uh, for, for the past year on a number of initiatives. Um, and uh, just um, looking, just by way of recap, because I know everybody here today wasn't here last year to hear Don's presentation, but uh, uh, Don introduced this group last year, um, and uh, it represents uh, the coastal industry. Um, we have a senior steering committee team uh, made up of, uh, of a number of the leaders in the industry. Uh, Don Demens from Western, from Timber West, Brian Frank, myself from Island Timberlands, uh, Otto Schulte from Interfor, uh, Mike Falconer from BC Timber Sales. Um, we also have um, the Truck Luggers Association represented on that, um, and uh, Randall Hurt from the Forest Safety Council and Bob Matters from uh, Steelworkers. So, um, you know, we think we've got a pretty good representation there. Uh, the group uh, itself, uh, so the guys that do all the work, uh, um, was formed in 2012. Uh, and as, as mentioned, it represents the coastal licensees, timberland owners, uh, contractors, the Truck Loggers Association, and the, and the Steelworkers group. Uh, it's supported uh, by the um, by the staff at the Forest Safety Council, and, that, and that's where Reynolds' team comes in. And really, uh, the reason it was pulled together in the first instance uh, is because um, there was a real need identified to find a way to uh, move the progress along in terms of reducing uh, the incidence of injuries and uh, fatalities on the coast. Uh, although there had been some pretty good uh, progress uh, since um, the 2005 timeline when the Forest Safety Council was originally uh, put in place, um, we felt that really the, uh, the results had plateaued. Um, and, and so a new approach was needed and some new, new impetus and new effort was, was required. Um, so, uh, so the focus of the, of the group is really uh, just that reduction of fatalities and serious injuries associated with the various phases of logging on the coast of British Columbia. It is forest based, uh, so it doesn't really have a, a window into the manufacturing side. And really, uh, again, uh, focusing on moving the results beyond the plateau and toward an improving trend. Um, the, the next slide here uh, really uh, shows some of that trend and you can see um, the, the early part of the, the, uh, the trend uh, back to the days of the, the inception of the Safety Council uh, some pretty horrendous uh, numbers there um, it really came down. Uh, and, but over the last uh, five years or so, uh, really kind of plateaued. And you, and you have to look at these statistics. Uh, for, for one, it's a small, a small sample. But uh, the, the other is that there was an increase in activity from 2009 to 2014. 
Um, that said, um, we're not done on this until that is zero and straight across zero. And, and even then, uh, we're still not done because once we're finished dealing with uh, fatalities, we're going to be dealing with uh, serious injuries. And once we're dealing done with zero serious injuries, then we're going to be looking at um, less serious injuries. And when, when we finally reach the day that there are no injuries, We'll, stir, we'll still not be done because we'll be looking for the instances where there could have been an injury, which means we were just lucky that there wasn't. So, um, you know, it's going to be a, a never-ending uh, race. Uh, we're going to keep working at this, and, uh, and we've got a long way to go still. Um, so today, what I'd like to talk about is an update on the, on the progress uh, of CHAG. And, and this group has done a lot of work. Uh, they actually made all this presentation, so I'm just, I'm just the speaker. <laughs> they, they prepared all the materials, uh, but they've also done a lot of work uh, in moving some of these initiatives forward. So uh, the main items here are in falling. Uh, so uh, certified uh, falling supervisors, uh, danger tree blasting, and fit to fall. Uh, you know, in a lot of these issues, as, as an industry, we are fairly diverse. Uh, you can see it by looking around the room, but you, you can also know it by knowing the various companies. Everybody's tends to be a little bit individualistic. They have their own way of doing things, and it's really hard to get a bunch of those kind of cats into one room and get them all doing the same thing. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that this uh, Coastal Harvest Advisory Group has been pretty effective at. Uh, they've been probably doing a fair amount of arm wrestling uh, on some of these issues, and they're moving them forward and getting to resolution and then getting, getting results. Um, another uh, couple of items they're working on is phase congestion. Uh, as you all know, the safe companies audits are being renewed and revitalized, and so uh, a lot of what the Harvest Advisory Group is doing is making sure that that fits with the new direction that they're seeing coming out of their discussions. And, and another one that was added in is, uh, is this emergency evacuation. I'll talk some more about that one uh, in a bit. Uh, so in terms of the, uh, the first one, the, the certified falling supervisor, um, so, so this is a, a, a bit of a thorny one because you know, we hear from fallers that um, w one of the issues that, that they have is that, well, first of all, they just want to go out and do their work, as, as Dr. Roberts said, and not be told what to do. But on the other hand, when somebody does come and tell them what to do, they want to know and respect that that person knows what he's talking about. And so this comes back to the point of, are, are all the supervisors who are responsible for fallers knowledgeable enough in the art and science of falling to be able to give constructive and critical feedback in terms of improving process? So um, the, the companies uh, that are a part of this uh, Coast Harvest Advisory Group have have agreed that we'll require uh, that falling crews have certified falling supervisors in place uh, by the end of this year. Uh, to date, 54 have been certified. Uh, and if you are a falling company and don't have a certified falling supervisor in place, there is still time uh, to get those people certified before you're in by contacting the, the Forest Safety Council. Um, Another one which came up was uh, danger tree blasting, and, and this is a sort of a fail-safe in the event, uh, you know, danger trees are just that, they're difficult, uh, difficult to fall, and too many times uh, we go in and try to deal with the situation because the faller is the only guy who can deal with it. Uh, they tend to put themselves in, into situations that they probably shouldn't because they feel they have to, and we, uh, the feeling of the advisory group was we need to be able to put in a place where uh, put in place a process whereby <coughs> access to blasting technology is uh, more universally available. Pretty easy uh, right next to Nanaimo because there's all kinds of road construction and to put it bluntly, easy to get your hands on explosives and people who can use them. But in a lot of places, because of regulation and requirement, that's not the case. So if, if there is no active road building, there are no explosives, there's no powder mag, there's no ability for the faller to access that. So um, um, the, the solution that uh, the group has come up with on that is um, get, get in place the ability to have portable magazines. That, that part of the process is done. Uh, and, and the other one is really uh, around um, 
um, getting uh, explosives sourced into these, uh, into these more remote areas uh, because of all of the, the regulation required in terms of who, who's allowed to buy explosives. And CHAG is, uh, is working on that uh, with uh, Natural Resources Canada. Um, the next one is, um, is the fit to fall, and this is where Dr. Roberts comes in. Um, so a lot of things that, that she said in her presentation are applicable here. Uh, she has given uh, training to uh, eight organizations and over 200 people year to date. Um, as well, uh, personal awareness training, uh, 44 individuals have attended the pilot on that. Uh, in terms of uh, the degraded imaging uh, project, uh, training materials are ready to pilot. And uh, on fatigue awareness and management, uh, 80 individuals have participated uh, in the ready band work and uh, to provide data on uh, uh, specific to fallers in the industry. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of progress on that one. Uh, phase congestion is another one that came up and really what this is is, uh, okay, there's some wood out there, we gotta get it in as quick as possible. Uh, everybody swarm the area and try to get it done at ASAP. Um, you know, we, we just because faller, uh, fallers, loggers are by nature innovative, they're innovators, they're individualists, uh, they're able to get stuff done, they just do it, right? Um, they work in a fairly uh, complex environment and they just do it seamlessly. Well, when, when you take a group like that and you put them into a, give them a challenge, they'll find a way and they, sometimes people start kind of getting in each other's way and, uh, and we get uh, situations where people are put in, in danger's way. So um, the team has worked hard on pulling together materials for this. Uh, there's a poster uh, that they have which, which basically underscores the need of people to say, you know what, it's getting too crowded in here, this is dangerous, we have to take a step back and figure out a better way of doing this. Um, uh, it's, it's really important to make sure at the planning process that we're not stacking uh, activities on top of each other. So, you know, that's literally in elevation. So logs from above can, can't roll down on the, the next guy down. Um, and also um, look to ways to minimize the number of people, a number of phases working together in an area where possible. So that goes to better uh, planning ahead, uh, better inventory management. Um, and, and at the end of it, as, as I said with regard to the, uh, the poster, reminding everybody that when they think it's getting too tight and, and too, uh, too dangerous, put your hand up, call for a time out and say, wait a second, this is getting too difficult. Let's figure out a better way before somebody really gets into the bite. Um, in terms of the safe company audits, uh, as, as we uh, mentioned that, that the audit is being revised, it's uh, simplified, streamlined, um, and uh, so the, the advisory group has been on an ongoing basis providing feedback to, uh, to the council on that. Um, the overhauled audit has been tested uh, through a pilot process. It's going to the board, uh, of which I'm on, for approval uh, this fall, and uh, it'll incorporate the uh, right to refuse work, and, and really, I mean, most companies, we, we have that in our company, that's one of the fundamentals, everyone has that right to refuse on safe work. But it's, it's a matter of making sure that uh, we check for that. Is, is that clear in everybody's mind, not just is it a policy, does everybody realize that that's the case? Um, and also the expectations around phase congestion. And the goal is to have the new audit in place uh, early in 2015. Um, in terms of uh, the emergency evacuation of injured workers, um, you know, this is one that is, it's kind of strange if you think about it, um, is uh, if, if you're a hiker and you get lost because you don't know what you're doing, uh, it's easy to get the big yellow helicopter from search and rescue to come and pl pluck you off the mountain. But if you're a worker who spends your whole life working on the mountains and you get hurt, that yellow helicopter won't come in and help you. So, um, you know, thanks to John Bocock and John Mann, uh, both of Western, who are working hard with uh, the authorities to turn that around and make it more realistic. That, you know, these, these assets, they're government assets. They, they have high capability. They can fly in just about any weather and they can do what needs to be done. Uh, we just need a way of getting them 
uh, scrambled to, uh, to solve this issue and, and both Johns have been uh, making some really good headway on that. Um, the, um, the subcommittee has also been working with rural doctors in the BCMA uh, towards um, the, the um, eventual goal of having a dedicated provincial helicopter. So this is outside of the big yellow helicopter because sometimes there could be something that the yellow helicopter is already doing. Um, it, it's good to have a backup uh, capacity. Um, in terms of, the, of this advisory group model, we've got a little uh, diagram here and um, you know, we, th we think this is really working well and it's not just uh, CHAG, it's uh, MAG, which is the manufacturing advisory group in the, uh, in the interior uh, and on the coast, uh, primarily set up to address the dust issue. Um, the, the trucking advisory group or TAG, uh, which is really dealing with the uh, uh, large number of trucking related, logging truck related uh, incidents. Um, CHAG, and there's a bunch of others as well which aren't on this diagram because we couldn't fit them all on. But really, these advisory groups all have, uh, have one thing in common. Um, so they're sponsored by senior leadership, so they have buy-in by those leaders, whether it's in companies or whether it's in associations or, um, or what have you, in government. Um, they have participation by subject matter experts, so, so the guys who sit on CHAG uh, know their stuff. Uh, and in the case where they don't really know their stuff, which not everybody knows everything, um, they are able to draw on special resources and that's where this uh, FTAC comes in, the following technical advisory committee, uh, which, which has got specialists in that discipline who, who really know following. Um, so, so these guys are able to cover the whole spectrum of, uh, of the detail. Uh, they have, uh, as I say, that, that assistance of other technical resources as necessary. And, and they also have the support from the Forest Safety Council. So the staff of the Forest Safety Council are supporting these initiatives. Um, the model is working well. Uh, we believe it's, it's allowed us uh, to move much more rapidly uh, along the process of achieving the results. So, because we have the uh, senior leadership aligned with the technical people, when, when the uh, recommendations come out, it's kind of like, yeah, we're doing that. In fact, it's not even, by the time the recommendation comes out, it's probably already being actioned. So it really speeds up the process and we, av we avoid the, the situation where a committee studies something for six months, they come back with a recommendation the senior group mulls over it for another six or eight weeks, they argue and fight and decide they're not gonna do it and we've wasted all this time and not only that, wasted all this energy. So this, this process seems to be working well and, and congratulations to uh, CHAG and all the other AGs. Um, I, I mentioned in the board, uh, recent uh, Forest Safety Council board meeting that you know, we call these groups advisory groups, but I really think they should be called action groups because that's what they're doing. They're taking action, and that's really what we need, leadership and action towards uh, improving safety. Um, the last slide I have, which is by my watch, uh, three and a half minutes to 12, so almost on time. Um, the CHAG members, and I just wanted to thank them all for, for the work, not only in preparing this presentation, but all the work they've done so far this year and, and before. Uh, Ken Hagenbotham, the chair, um, John Bocock from Western, uh, Craig Fredrickson from uh, TLA, Don Holmes from Timber West, Steve Venus, also TLA, uh, Ralph Friedrich from Interfor, Ron Corbeil, uh, United Steelworkers, uh, Dave Murray, Interfor, Noel Poulin, BC Timber Sales, and uh, last but not least, Mark Latow from Island Timberlands. Thanks, guys, for, uh, for your ongoing efforts on this important initiative. Thank you.